You're listening to Sure Ditch Radio. SureDitchRadio.co.uk. Greetings and welcome to Bugbears Rock and Roll High School. Welcome to all you lovely Sure Ditch Radio listeners. Lovely to have your ears. Uh, I'm Mr. Tony. I'm the um, head of department, sixth form. Well, sixth form. I say sixth form. Sixth form poetry. Sixth form humour, probably. The tumescent head of sixth form humour, perhaps. And I'm here today with Mr. Charles. And uh, he's the uh, PE teacher come football guy. Um, you probably <laughs> know him. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Charles, what have you got in your bag for us today? You've brought some treats along for us? Yes. Well, thank you very much, Tony. My name is actually Chris Charles. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I've got a first name, a.k.a. Wig, which I'm sure you'll talk about later on. Um, well, I've got a couple of tunes up my sleeve, one of which we couldn't play, but we'll talk more about that later. Um, we've got something coming up from the adverts, iconic 70s punk band. Oh, yeah. And also um, a tune from Mark Bolin and T-Rex, uh, oh, another iconic 70s band. OK, so here we are as snug as a bug in the lair of the bear, because this is the Bug Bear Rock and Roll High School. Broadcasting you to you from a school, actually. It's, it's, we're ensconced in one of the turrets on the east wing with a nice bottle of single malt and some choice extracurriculars we've confiscated from the boys and girls. As I say, I'm Mr. T Mr. Tony, and this is Mr. Chris. And uh, rock and roll is the thing. And the first rule of rock and roll is to be a contrary git. So, rock and roll high school, no, we're not going to play that by the Ramones. We're going to play Blitzkrieg Bop. And then after that, a track by a new band called Pussycat and the Dirty Johnsons called Trouble with the Devil. So let's go. The Ramones, Blitzkrieg Bop. OK, there you go. Um, you've heard the Ramones, first of all, the band that launched a million T-shirts. And one or two of the people that wear them apparently have heard their music. And also, uh, Pussycat and the Dirty Johnsons, a brilliant band that have been on the circuit now, not long, about 18 months. Haven't actually got them booked in uh, Bugbears Rock and Roll High School at the moment. But uh, they are playing, I believe... At the Stag's Head in the Hoxton environs on the 27th of January. So anyway, Chris, Chris Charles over there, uh, what did you think of Pussycat and the Dirty Johnsons? A new band to you, maybe? I don't know. No, I have come across them before. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, like you say, they've been on the circuit. I can't exactly remember where and when, but somewhere in some seedy den in London. Do you remember uh, seeing a girl that looks a lot like Sue Catwoman I was for just, the great rock and roll <laughs> swindle, et cetera? I was just going to say that, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, she's... Uh, I mean, I would imagine if you took her home or she took you home, it would be quite a fun, well, funny experience. We don't allow that sort of thing at the Bugbear <laughs> Rock and Roll High School. The first rule of rock and roll is no sex. You know that. Yeah. yeah. OK. What's okay. the other two? No drugs, no rock and roll? There's only one rule. Okay. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, I loved it. I, it, it, it. It. You know, without wanting to go over what you've just told me not to talk about, mm. I, it was very dirty. Mm. Uh, it is super sleazy, punk rock glam rock and roll and the riff on that is to die for it's a killer diller riff if ever, <laughs> if ever i heard a killer diller riff that my son is one and and uh, that was straight out of the tony blackburn school of killer we'll come on to tony blackburn <laughs> later well not literally obviously uh but maybe we will I don't know. but anyway let's let's move on so that's that's pussycat and the dirty johnson's fantastic band check them out at stag's head on the 27th of january they will be playing for Bugbear at some point. If you don't know what we do at Bugbear, we don't really run a school at all. That's, I was going to say, a, a spherical objects. But what we do do is the Dublin Castle in Camden Town, most famously, you've probably heard of it. It's not in Shoreditch, but you may have noticed that. It's in Camden Town. But we will be doing a night at the Stag's Head soon. So uh, look out for Bugbear's Rock and Roll High School at the Stag's Head in Shoreditch-ish. OK, so moving on. Um, so we're in the school, there's, you know, the corridors and the whiteboards and the bullying and the smell of cabbage cooking and turns the page on his script and classic rock and roll. So, you know, this programme's all about rock and roll and its various aspects, which could be anything really from, to me, Miles Davis is rock and roll. What about you, Chris? What do you think? What do I think? Oh, well, I mean, rock and roll spans generations, doesn't it? I mean, it started mm. off... Like you say, in the 50s, um, mm. Elvis, probably uh, your original rock and roll merchant. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I, I think punk is, is rock and roll. Punk is essence of rock and roll. Very much so, yeah. Is the X Factor rock and roll, Chris? No. It's not, is it? So, Chris, um, we've got a tune now that you've selected to play us tonight, and I believe it's a T-Rex song. It is. It's a T-Rex song you probably know called Children of the Revolution. Mm -hmm. Um 
the reason I've selected that I'll come on to in a minute, but the first time I came across T Rex, uh, I was I was about five or six years old. They were on top of the pops, and my dad had identical hair to Mark Bolan. And as oh, really? a, as, a, as a three, four, five year old, whatever I was, um, I looked up on the telly and saw this man in leopard skin and said, "Daddy, uh, Mummy, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say Daddy, no. Mummy. Why is Daddy on the telly?" Oh, and, that's funny because uh, my dad had identical hair to David Bowie. Really? No. no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, can uh, yeah, let's listen to T Rex doing Children of the Revolution, and then we'll dissect it in a rock and roll high school manner. Okay, afterwards. look forward to it. Fantastic. Okay, the lovely Mark Bowlin there. Sadly, no longer with us due to a tree. Um, but that's Children of the Revolution. Brilliant song, I think. Yeah, I've reacquainted myself with that, and I do like it again, because I thought, I thought I wasn't keen on it. I'm glad you didn't say Mark Bolan's biggest hit was a tree. Cause I was, I was well, you very just up- said that. I know, but I was very yeah. upset as a child when, you know... Well, that that joke was doing the rounds, yeah. yeah. Anyway, go, go on, tell us about Children of the Revolution... OK, well, the thing with Children of the Revolution, A, it's their, it's probably their most rocky, the, the, the rockiest track. He was called the Godfather of Punk, and I think mm. that sort of epitomises the punk spirit. I think it's very ahead of its time. But also, uh, as a lyricist, I mean, the, the, you, you stand on two sides of the fence here. But for me, I drive a Rolls Royce because it's good for my voice. Is just sheer genius, mm. I think. Whereas other people I've spoken to said it's pretentious I'm in two minds twaddle. about that. Sometimes I think it's just silly. But uh, see, Iggy Pop is yeah, the other you... is the other much mooted godfather of punk, and his lyrics are like that too. You know, I, I want to be your dog. I mean, the, the lyrics to that are kind of like primal, but a bit silly. But a fantastic tune. Anyway, yeah. So, Children of the Revolution for you, a major song in your youth, and yes, having very... seen your dad on TV and being yeah. slightly alarmed. Yes, indeed. Uh, it was quite alarming because I'd never, I'd always seen my dad in sort of jeans or whatever they used to wear in the seventies, uh, yeah. and to see him dressed up in some leopard skin number with makeup, yeah, it was just stuff. freaked me a bit. But so uh, fortunately, yeah. my mum put me right and said he was just at work. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're giving her ages away, but that's no problem because you know we are the teachers here at Bugbears Rock and Roll High School. We're the masters. We're not the pupils. And we're happy with that scenario. Uh, actually, there's another teacher, Mr. Jim, my joint head of department. He should be here, but he's got a lot of marking to do apparently. Um, that's strange, though, because I'm sure I saw Miss Tench, the French mistress, waiting outside his room with a crate of brown ale. So I don't know what's going on there. But, um, yeah, hello, Mr Jim. Anyway, let's listen to a new band now. Uh, about, well, they're not a new band, actually. They've been going for probably the best part of seven, eight years. They're called Of Arrow Hill. They're from Liverpool. And uh, listen to this fantastic tune. Um, well, we're going to play their tune first. It's called Damned. It's um, from their latest album, At Home and Other Rumours of Misadventure very poetic and it's going to be followed by a pretty things track the classic band the pretty things and a track called private sorrow but before we do that let's just say that you can see of arrow hill and you're going to want to see them after you hear this they're going to be playing the constitution in camden town on the 10th of february and the dublin castle on march the 9th so this is of arrow hill okay so they're the very strange and wonderful and weird happening sounds of the pretty things back in 1968 and a tune called private sorrow lovely stuff and uh, before that, uh, of Arrow Hill and a tune called Damned. And as I say, they're playing soon. So, Chris, what was your opinion of, of Arrow Hill? Well, I really wanted to come in here and do a Simon Cowell and slag a few people off, but uh, uh, everything I've heard so far I've liked, which is a bit disappointed, really. Um, I mean, yeah, I loved it. A real nice chugging rhythm. Uh, I mean, he sounds a bit like the geezer from Reverend and the Makers, uh, a little bit of that oh, sort of, okay. feel of uh, you know, intonation in his voice. But I thought it was a really nice track. I mean, does he, does he, is it always like a sort of acoustic or does he normally no, have a backing band? No, sometimes they're like a sort of power trio and then other times they're kind of like a beatnik acoustic thing. And at the moment they're going more for the latter. Yeah. Um, but he's an interesting character. Lord Kitchen Knife is the main man. They've all got weird <laughs> names such as that. I think the rhythm, the percussionist is called Shaker Maker. Right. So, you know, and they're, they're from Liverpool and they've got that kind of And they last, are from Liverpool. Yeah, they've got well, the last thing. But they've got that sort of 1968 White Album Beatles vibe. Well, they have, but it's interesting to say because Reverend the Makers are from Liverpool. I'm not yeah. saying they're an identity of Reverend the Makers, but I just I just got that, like I say, that intonation in his voice, okay. which may be the Fair Scouse enough. accent. I've never got into Reverend the Makers. It's one of them things. I'm not saying what... I have. I'm, no, just... <laughs> I'm saying you have, though. <laughs> we'll sort this one out later. Yeah, OK. Anyway. In the playground. <laughs> but you approve of... Of Arrow I Hill. very much yeah. approve of them. And I I'd, approve I'd like them too. To, I'd like to hear more of them. Check them out. Go on to iTunes or whatever it is that you find your music on 
and uh, find their music because it's very, very good. There's a lot of it and it's all very good. So we're going to have one more tune now that Chris here, Chris Charles. But you haven't told us about Look, before we do that, you haven't told us about your other life. You're not really the football master at Bugbear's Rock and Roll High School. You're, you've got a life outside of that. What do you do, Chris? Oh, shucks, Tony. Yeah. Well, OK. Well, I, very briefly, I used to write music about music many years ago for the BBC, yeah. mainly for the BBC website, Dig Glastonbury, blah, 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 blah. But nowadays, I'm, yes, I'm writing more about football. I, I, um, I, I did blogs on the BBC for a while. I'm, I'm now... a uh, a guest on Sports Tonight TV, mm-hmm. and uh, write stuff for the Football League, and yeah. And who is it you support? I support QPR. He supports Tony. QPR, and I hate Chelsea, uh, <laughs> which I believe <laughs> Look, is your team. <laughs> I, I support Chelsea, but I support Bristol City, really. Yeah, and, I, know, it's not a very Chelsea accent you've yeah, got there, is exactly. It? So I'm a, I'm a big fraud. Anyway, let's go on to another one of your selections. And uh, it's <laughs> Gary Gilmore's Eyes by the Adverts. So this is going to be followed by a new track by The Fall off their 997th album, I think, which is just out called Ursatz GB, a track called Mass Search. But before that, Gary Gilmore's Eyes. Tell me a little bit about Gary Gilmore's Eyes and what it means to you. Well, Gary Gilmore's Eyes was on an album called 20 of Another Kind, which was a compilation album, which, funny enough, had 20 tracks on of mm. exciting punk and new wave tunes, which is the first album I, I ever got. I remember it. A guy <laughs> spitting on the front, I believe. Well, I mean, that was a big thing. We could never took multicoloured hair or multicoloured uh, effects and could never tell whether it was a woman or, or a man, so you didn't know if you were allowed Definitely to... Definitely spitting, though. Yes, but you didn't Disgusting. know if you were allowed to fancy Disgusting. them or not. Disgusting. Um, yeah, so um, so that was one of the tracks. I mean, I could have picked any number of tracks, but I always, I've, I've always thought TV Smith's got a fantastic voice. I think they're very underrated, really. And of course, Gay Advert is mm. fanciable as you know. Lovely. Plot. And curating a um, some sort of um, exhibition in, in some swanky place in the West End, at okay. the moment, I believe, of ex-punk rockers' pictures. I don't, I don't really have any more details on that. I'm sure she'd be delighted that you somewhere. plugged that. I've plugged that, yeah. But, I mean, I, I just think the whole track is, you know, just from, like, the sort of sinister drums at the beginning, uh, from the yeah. whis- whispered intro. And the subject material. And the subject material, the, not to be confused with the cricketer of the same name, but the oh, really? guy who was... Uh, who was executed by firing squad in in 1977, yeah. I think. Um, and I don't think he did really donate his sight to science, and I don't really think anyone did have Gary Gilmore's eyes, but it's a nice little... It's a um, nice thought. Uh, before we play it, I do remember seeing the adverts doing this on Top of the Pops and TV Smith having an action man <laughs> yeah. attached to his wrist. <laughs> and Tony Blackburn, who we did mention earlier, then came on and said, oh, he's... He seems to have something wrong with his wrist. <laughs> and I think the he, what he was trying to say, but he couldn't say at 7.20 on BBC One on a Thursday evening, was, what a wanker. But anyway... No, not Tony Blackburn. He, won, he was king of the jungle, for goodness sake. King of the wanker. Anyway, Yay. here's Gary Gilmore's Eyes by the adverts. OK, that's a lovely slinky kind of rockabilly meets jazz meets just general weird stuff there, which you'd expect from the fall. And uh, the first rule of rock and roll... Have we already had a first rule of rock and roll? Yeah, no sex. Oh, okay. The first rule... No, that was the... Yeah. The first rule of rock and roll is that if you don't like the fall, you don't like life, um, to paraphrase someone. Joe, Samuel Johnson. Joe Pascali, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> was it not? Anyway, um, turns the page. Uh, <laughs> so, DJ, the page, DJ action yeah. around this town. Do you go out and shake a leg much, Chris? Do I go out and shake? What in in Shoreditch? You mean? Well, anywhere. Um, well, I've got two kids, so that really that, that sort oh, of hamstrings right. you. Well, we're masters at bug bear, I, It's better to take, talk about where I used to go. I think. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, clearly London is still one of the most happening and diverse places to go out and dance, and you're spoiled for choice. No, I do get I do get out of it, and in fact, I mean. Uh, Dalston, you know, I hate to hate to uh, pee off the Shoreditch listeners here, but apparently Dalston's where it's at. Or, or yeah, it's probably yeah, yeah. not, as I'm speaking, it's probably Hackney Wick, where I used well, to live. Well, I'm about to reintroduce the uh, rancid old borough of Camden Town, although we're here in, in Shoreditch. Yeah. Uh, because I have to say, Bugbears Rock and Roll High School is based mainly at the Dublin Castle in Camden Town. And the DJ action we have in there of a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. I find that, OK, your house and electro, et cetera, et cetera. What people really like is the three-minute classic pop, rock and roll, R&B tune from, you know, Do you mean, do you mean the... R&B as in the R&B? No, 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 no. I mean R&B yeah, that's as what I in meant. Fats yeah, yeah. Domino or rock, See, old rock and roll R&B is to me... so popular with the kids. These, you wouldn't believe it. They go mental for Oh, it. I know, I know. But R&B to it. me is, and soul. is not... Um, 
you know, a, a few people gyrating no, on, the, on the screen. Let's not even consider that. No. It's it's cheese and pineapple and uh, baked potatoes on the bar on a Sunday evening, yeah, on Sunday yeah. afternoon. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is we have these DJ nights in the Dublin Castle. They go really well. And I'm going to play you now two tunes that just every time get people on the dance floor and always, when I play them, I always just get that feeling in my heart, soul, rectum, wherever. <laughs> that just, steady, ma steady. Yeah, just makes me feel amazing. So you're going to hear I'm a Man by the Spencer Davis Group and a track called I'm Losing You by Billy Hawks. And if you haven't heard I'm Losing You by Billy Hawks, it's like a deep soul tune. I, it probably would get called Northern Soul, but I don't know. When I was going to the Twisted Wheel, I don't remember hearing it back in 1971. But anyway, I'm a man, Spencer Davis Group, I'm Losing You, Billy Hawks. Check these two out. Yeah, that, probably the greatest song of all time there, I'm Losing You by Billy Hawks. Quite seriously. Uh, two absolute stone-dead classic dance tunes. No amount of uh, tampering would improve them. So Mark Ronson, please take note. I saw Mark Ronson once and he was playing... Um, no disrespect to Mark Ronson, he's a lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing um, I'm a Man by the Spencer Davis Group, and he was mixing it with Duran Duran, and he had a sample of like lyrics that were going, My name is Ronson, and I mix it with the band. No, he didn't. He did. Shut I swear. Up. I swear. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we were, the the first rule of rock and roll is if it ain't broke, get your stupid hands off it. Don't. No, hang on, hang on. That's, that's the third rule, isn't it? Oh, okay. All right. So um, that we're now going to go to another old tune. I'm afraid <laughs> I was going to have a nice newie in here. Oh no, but Chris, you wanted to play a particular Smith song, I believe. Well, yeah. I, I, you asked me to come up with a few tracks. So I was sort of racking my brains because on on the one hand, you want to appear to be totally cool and just bring out these sort of tracks pretty much like you have actually <laughs> from the vault that no one's ever heard of yeah, yeah. but the particular trip smith track i wanted to play was my favorite smith track called miserable lie which is on the first album but we um, haven't got that for you yeah tonight. but we for, for some reason it slipped the net and I, i'm not i just like that because it's just such a vocal range you sort of got angry morrissey you've got nice ch cheery morrissey mm. and then you've got completely deranged um I, can't, I was going to say stiletto. What am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Staccato. Fal no, falsetto. Oh, That's right. one. <laughs> Staccato is falsetto plus stiletto. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, we haven't got that. So okay. what, what these kind people here have got for us is mm. panic, um, which is also... Uh, what we're doing here right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I remember this going to number six straight in at the charts as we were driving up to go to a, little, a boy's holiday, a teenage boy's holiday in Blackpool. What uh, were you going to a teenage boy's holiday for? Oh, I see this was... Because we were when, teenage oh, boys God, and we sorry, fancied a holiday. Sorry, right, got, got and then, And on the way up, we decided to divert to Salford and Salford. go and stand outside Salford Lads Club oh, fantastic. and have the obligatory photo, which was probably oh, great. about 1987. Maybe um, we can post those on the website. I would imagine, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. I think there's some on... I'd like to see them. Yeah. So um, I'm going to play this now. So there you are. So Panic that's It That's a beautiful, is. beautiful story. Panic by the Smiths. Thank you. Well, if you've never heard that before, that's the Stranglers not sounding as you usually perhaps imagine them to, with George Melly, the old jazzer, on vocals, and a guy called Lou Lewis playing some amazing harmonica. Absolutely brilliant track. And uh, before that, the other old codger you heard there was Morrissey. And Chris, if you'd just like to mention um, your thoughts on Morrissey now. Well, OK, I'll give you a very quick story. The only time I ever met Morrissey, I was drinking at a pub in Camden, the Good Mixer, which oh, is yeah. uh, back in the 90s when... I lived in a I lived in a bizarre street actually where menswear lived at number twenty nine, Kaniki were at number six, Chapter House at seventeen, and Ali G at number eighteen. But that's another story. And Joe Pascali lived in that road as well. <laughs> oh, he certainly yeah. did, yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, so you used to get a lot of you know a lot of music stars came into the good mixer, and no one really batted an eyelid. But Morrissey, sort of rock royalty, came mm. in that time. And um, there was a guy from Q with him, and the first thing we noticed was Morrissey was getting was getting drunk, and we were like, you know, this is the guy who eats macrobiotic yogurt. As uh, someone just said here, <laughs> the, the the notorious vegan. Exactly, and and so we found that quite strange. But anyway, in those not that beers made of meat, but <laughs> <laughs> you follow me. In the, in those days, and this is where the younger listeners turn off. But you didn't have mobile phones, so the the the, the phone was in the back end of the bar where we were. So this Q journalist had to come into the back bar. And phone up his editor so we could hear everything we're saying. He's basically saying, Look, I've got Morrissey pissed, he'll say whatever we want. So mm. I'd probably had a few myself then. I was on this mission to to tell Morrissey, so I followed him into the loo and he didn't use the urinal like anybody else. He went into the cubicle to pee. Right. 
And when he came out, I said, uh, Morrissey, Morrissey, that, that bloke from Q's trying to stitch you up. And he looked at me with a withering look and said, in your dreams. And that's it. That's my Morrissey Can experience. you tell us your Pete Shelley story? No, let's, let's, <laughs> oh, let's get that. We'll tune in another time oh, for the dear. Pete Shelley story. It's <laughs> good. Yes. Anyway, so there you go. Those two amazing tracks. Um, now we've got... I was going to mention this earlier, actually, but I forgot to because... Of, there you go. Um, bit You're old. The place old and infirm, <laughs> like most of the masters here at Bugbears Rock and Roll Heights. Not really a school, obviously. We're sitting in a bloody studio, aren't we? Is there, am I letting the conceit run away with me? Do you yeah, think? yeah I mean... maybe. Anyway, so um, I was going to say, we've got a bit of an exclusive because before the artist Rumour, a.k.a. Sarah Joyce, signed to Atlantic and became Housewife's Choice on Radio 2... She worked with a guy called Rory Moore, a kind of a shoreditcher, actually, an uber swinger, an org organiste electrique, it says here. And uh, they were doing this kind of library music material, and it's really fantastic. It's very good stuff. I mean, for me, the rumour thing, I mean, it's not rock and roll for me, and the first rule of rock and roll is rumour isn't rock and roll. But on this track, I would argue that although this is a swinging bit of lounge core, this is a brilliant track, and uh, it's going to be available soon on an album called Close to the Sun, on vinyl, on Sudden Hunger Records, exclusive, Stereo Venus, and a track called Scarlet. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Yeah, I went all kind of wonderful Radio 1 there. Meshes, um, Dusty, Karen Carpenter, and uh, sounds a bit like an old Orbital track, funnily enough. But um, what a swinging solo on there from what I believe is a Larry organ. Because we love to study beautiful organs here at the Bugbear Rock Ooh, and Roll. very Hives. much so. Don't we, Chris? Yes, we yes. do. Yes. So anyway, um, that what, what did you think of that? Did you did you did you enjoy that? <laughs> I thought that was uh, I thought it was fantastic actually. Yeah. What I, did you I, like best? <laughs> the intro or the outro? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no, I'll let you into a second. He hasn't heard this tune. I'm sorry about this, but I can I can assure you it is brilliant. Yeah, I, I heard the first 20 seconds, which I thought were great, but I, I have to say the closing 20 seconds really really top that for me. So, um, my vote's going to the the outro. Okay. All right then. So, um, well, <laughs> it is really nice. I don't know where he's playing, uh, Rory Moore. Um, he will be playing some gigs around Shoreditch, no doubt. But that's his thing that he did with the rather massively huge now rumour back in the day, and it's going to be available soon. So that's an exclusive. I think they played at Glastonbury Rumour, and mm. I, I think it's I not saw me, about mate. five minutes, and it was wrong. rubbish. But okay, anyway. so anyway, I'm, I'm now going to um, play a little Bo Diddley tune, because, um, to be perfectly frank, a nice band that I had lined up called the Nomadics. Their their um, tune didn't work, so we can't play it. So uh, here's but they're very good. They're very good, and they're playing the Dublin Castle soon. So look out for them. Next time we'll get them on. Um, so here's "Who Do You Love" by Bo Diddley, and this is pretty much the essence of good rock and roll. Okay, fabulous, Mr. Bo Diddley, the essence of rock and roll. Who do you love? We love you, Bo, and we love Chris. Chris Charles, thank you for coming along. It's been fantastic. And Shoreditch Radio, what an amazing station. I mean, if you listen to internet stations, this is basically the one. The shows on this station are incredible. So tune in. And we will be back, hopefully. Yeah, thank you, bear. by the way. <laughs> thank, thank you. Mind your mic. <laughs> what are you doing with that microphone? <laughs> it's it's imprisoned. Stop it me. now. <laughs> Bugbears Bug Bug Rock and Roll High School will return. I'm not quite sure when, but it will. And um, there'll be a Buzzcocks tune in the next one, and then we can hear if we can get Chris away from his football pundit stardom that's beckoning. He's trending right now, you know. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, all I'll say is there's a lovely Pete Shelley story in the offing, <laughs> oh, and no. uh, it's tasty. So, uh, thanks a lot. We'll see you again at Bugbears <laughs> Rock and Roll High School. Thank you. Chin chin.